All right. Um, good morning, everyone. This is Monica Olson from the State Board Policy Associate for Accessibility. Welcome to CTC Link Accessibility Open Forum, uh, November's edition. We're glad to have you here today. Um, before I hand it over to Sandy Main and her team and Chris Soren, a few housekeeping items to mention. Uh, this meeting is recorded, as is all of our open forums. We do post the recording with captions on the um, accessibility, CTC Link accessibility webpage afterwards. Um, right now, we are using Zoom's live auto captioning feature. If you need to follow along using captions, uh, please press the CC button on your Zoom screen. We do have a professional uh, CART provider schedule for today's session, though I, I don't see her yet. I'll keep an eye on on the waiting room and when that person joins us, we'll switch over to professional CART captioning. Um, as always, uh, please feel free to uh, share a comment or a question in the chat. I'll do my best to help moderate that space while others are speaking and presenting. Um, and then, of course, if you'd like to raise your hand and um, unmute yourself to ask a question or comment, please feel free to do so. Um, but if you are not speaking, please try to keep your mic on mute to help everyone hear each other. If you do decide to share a comment or ask a question, please state your name before you um, share your comment. All right, that's it from me. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Sandy now. That's okay with you, Sandy. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Sandy May, and I'm trying to get my um, video to work. So get, bear with me one moment here. Hello, everybody. And I am trying to bring up the slide presentation as well. Need to find it. And if, is it showing the presentation mode? It's hard for me to tell from here or if it's showing the. It's showing the uh, present presenters mode. Oh, okay, now we're still now seeing that. Slide. Uh, it figures. I should just not. Let me stop sharing and try that again. I apologize. It. I think last time we met, my um, actual Zoom session didn't even work, and <laughs> this time it's um, deciding that it wants to play fun with me on the slide presentation. So just a second. Sandy, that's okay. This is Monica. Take your time. We're still. Oh, yeah. I'm still admitting people from the waiting room, so no rush. Any better? This is Sandy again. Looks good. That looks great. Okay, I'm not going to touch anything, I promise. <laughs> Sandy? This is Monica. You put yourself on mute. Are you hoping to pass the mic on to someone else? Uh, this is Sandy. I was just waiting to when you feel good that most people are in the room, then we'll get started. Oh, okay. Right now we've got 34 people strong. I think we can go ahead and keep on moving. I'll just keep letting people in if they are filtering in late. Sounds great. So hello again, everybody. It's Sandy Main. I'm the Director of Application Services at the State Board Office. And um, we'll go ahead and get started into the advanced to the next slide. There we go. So the agenda, of course, we pretty much having a standard layout where we're going to talk a little bit about some of the current activities that we're working on uh, within the CTC Link uh, realm related to um, accessibility. And I'm actually, it'll be Christopher Soren's team that will do that process, uh, presentation. So surprise, Christopher. Um, <laughs> and we'll go into the Oracle service request. 
um, then we would jump into the uh, any questions that have come up this past month from the community at large and also which there aren't any at the moment. And then we'll leave it up at the end to do some college sharing um, amongst the group. So if there's any time left over, hopefully that you guys will be able to engage with each other and, and have some conversations. So um, I'll introduce Christopher Soren. He's our um, manager of application support. So his team pretty much takes care of all the technical um, application related uh, types of work that needs to happen for CTC Link. So thank you, Christopher. Everyone, this is Christopher. How you doing? So uh, we'll touch on the first one there. So the immunization collection um, project, you probably probably went in and put in your uh, self-attestation. And so we made a, a bunch of accessibility updates in ACM and we got those into production. And then we had to uh, test out all the accessibility updates in, on the campus solutions side, and those are going to production tonight. Um, and we got all, all those tested out. So exciting to get those pieces. There was a couple other pieces that we found you know, within all that testing that are some, some tools related stuff, and I'll, I'll touch on those on the next slide, uh, the people tools stuff. So. Um, there's also a high point. Um, so there, the college, some of the college logos um, need some additional alt tags on them, and that's in the process of being done right now. Um, and then also on the uh, online application portal, OAP. Uh, so there was some. Uh, Castech is currently working on a solution for uh, the input focus um, shifting on on URL box once you once you close out that that address address checking pop-up. Uh, so hopefully we'll have a solution for that pretty soon. Uh, Castex has always been pretty good about getting those fixes going. And uh, we're, all, we're continuing to, to meet with Oracle, uh, talking through all the service requests that we have, making sure we're making progress, keeping them honest, uh, and keeping things fixes coming. And uh, we're also continuing to have those uh, HCM monthly accessibility focus group calls. And they had uh, a question that they presented us in the last one that I'll actually uh, present to the group to get your feedback. Um, they like to come with, to us and ask how, how things should be done. Um, so I'll, I'll get to that here in that third point there. So the, um, the CS Academic Advisement Report, um, not all the tags are correct on that PDF output. Uh, so there is a fix already uh, coming. Uh, it's scheduled for CS image 24, uh, but we've asked to get that fixed a little faster. Um, so we're, we're waiting to see if we can get that proof of concept fixed from them uh, a little earlier so we can get that into production. So we're still waiting on the response on that. Um, there was uh, some travel authorization pieces I reported on last time. There was three issues that we found, two of those got resolved. Um, this last remaining third one, um, if you go in the in the grid there's an attachment button and it doesn't have a proper label um so oracle's fixed that and they got the fix coming in in uh, the fs 33 43 image um and so we got a prp from them we asked to get the fix a little uh, people soft release patch set to get that fix in quicker uh we applied it to our test environment and it didn't fix it um so uh because sometimes they're, they're pulling little pieces of code and then out to get the the release patch set um, so we tested it, we let them know what didn't work. And so we're, we're waiting for them to get that updated. Uh, so we can try that again. But at least we know the fix is coming in 43. So we're trying to get that sooner. And uh, on the on the W2 PDFs, um, so Oracle is continuing to uh, review all their all their processes. Um, and they, they got they got it mostly working um, and they're currently working through some issues they were encountering uh, with voiceover on on iOS and Mac OS. Um, so they're trying to trying to get those resolved so it's going to work across all the different device types. Um, and the, the one of the questions that they ask us that I wanted to, to bring to this group so. Um, if you are reading through that w2 PDF and you're navigating from box to box. Um, would you expect the screen reader to read out box one or just one? And I, <clears throat> I don't have a, a visual up here, but if you can remember what your PDF looks like with that the layout of all those different boxes. Um, 
we felt like either case, as long as it's properly reading out what box you're in, you know where you are when you're navigating that, whether it says one or box one, we felt that our initial feedback and thoughts were that that was compliant either way. Um, but we wanted to see if this group get your thoughts on it, see if you had a, a different opinion, different feedback. Box one. You got one vote for box one. Yeah, I see a comment in the chat that says box one. Um, another comment in the chat from a screen reader user that says either would work, but box one is preferable. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> well, we've got another session with them next week, so I can give them that feedback. We got that here. Another comment that says um, a screen reader should read exact, oh, hold on, um, I'm moving the comments. A screen reader oh, sure. should read exactly what's on the printed page. So the, um, if you're looking at your W2 PDF, it, oh, this is Chris Riggin, um, it doesn't have the word box on there. It just has the one in that top left corner of the box and then the data in the box. So it would read off one and then it would read off the data in the box. Um, or would it read box one and then the data in the box as you as you're as you're navigating through the box? So I see that's sort of why <laughs> we wanted some feedback here because technically all the all the all it has is the one in that corner. It doesn't say box one; it just has the one. But we're getting a lot of votes for box one. So, so so Chris, it, it visually we could see that it's a box. So I think it would be best to. Uh, actually have that say it's it's in a box for someone who is using a screen reader i mean does that make sense or it makes sense both ways to me um and i don't feel like one's not compliant my initial take was that it should be what is read on the page or what is displayed on the page um but didn't feel like having box one was not compliant um so we, we've kind of got votes both ways. <laughs> yeah. We're, Chris, this is Monica. I'm well, most seeing votes for box one. And I will, uh, if someone wants to unmute themselves and share a comment here in a second, please do. I'm just seeing a comment now, again, from um, a screen reader user on the call that says, the, the additional info noting that it's a box creates equal access for those who um, can't, I think, I think what, this person saying is who can't see that it's a box it would help me to understand the layout more clearly okay um and then earlier there was a question if the printed page says box one or just one and i think you did answer that that on the printed page it's actually just one um two etc so I, i'll go ahead and mute myself is there anyone um on the call who who wants to to unmute themselves and share a comment with the group I'm happy to keep moderating the chat as well. Oh, Pamaja. Um, oh, this is Christopher. Pamaja, I see you on video and I see you talking, but I wasn't sure if you were, you're still muted. Okay, it looks like you're still muted, Pamaja, if you're trying to say something. Sorry, can you hear me? This is Padma. You're a little distant, but I can hear you, yep. Sorry about that. Uh, so I saw Zach's comment asking about how the printout is. The printout actually, the printout doesn't say box specifically, but visually it appears as a box and inside that is a number. One, two, et cetera. So I would say that in printout, it says just one, two, three, et cetera. Does, does that answer your question, Zach? Hi, Padma. This is Zach Latin from Clark College. Um, I kind of meant that as a rhetorical question. Um, and I, I think we, we need to be careful 
when we're adding information to a document like the word box, um, I really think that we need to follow guidelines and standards for doing that. And so if there are, I'm, I'm frantically Googling, but if there are guidelines and standards for accessible W-2 forms that the IRS uses, um, then we need to be following those. Um, I will also mention that I am a congenitally blind screen reader user who has been doing his taxes um, since I've been working and I've never known a W-2 uh, PDF form to say the word box. So, you, you know, that's, but I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. I just think that we need to make a, a guidelines and standards based informed decision about this. Um, so my, my, my request to the state board would be to please uh, see if you can find some access, some guidelines and standards for creating accessible W-2s and follow those. Thank you. This is Christopher. Thanks for your feedback, Zach. Yeah, and this is Oracle that's making the changes and they're just asking for feedback from us. I said we'd ask everybody and provide the, the feedback from you. So thanks for that. Oh, good. Yeah, I appreciate everybody's comments and questions. Um, so I'll go ahead and keep rolling on. So the, um, the request options page, it, as you navigate through the page, it does a reload and doesn't announce to the screen reader user that the reload occurred. And while it doesn't impact the functionality, you can still use it. It's, it's still a violation that that wasn't announced, that that, that action happened. And so uh, Oracle has agreed that this is, a, this is an issue and, and they're currently working on, on, on fixing it. So. That's us. So there's also um, one of the things that uh, we that came up when we were testing the HCM, uh, the COVID vaccination attestation page, um, in addition to all the custom fixes that we made, we also uncovered some issues around the switch control and the back button and combo boxes. Um, so we fixed everything we could on our on our side, um, and then also open service requests for Oracle to try and fix some more uh, people tools level issues. Um, so the uh, the so the switch form control or that or that checkbox. Um, so it's it's non compliant. Um, you run the wave tool bar over uh, a page that has that switch form control. Um, so we, we, we let them know that that was, a, that was out of compliance. Um, and so we, Oracle is currently reviewing. Uh, we're going back and forth and talking with them on that one. Uh, so if you're in screen reader mode, and um, so we, when you try and use the back button, it, it doesn't work if, if you're on a page um, that was accessed with transfer page functions. So if you transfer that page, try to go back. So um, there is a fix coming in People Tools 859. We're currently on uh, 85721. <clears throat> and so that's a future update coming. Uh, a little ways out, but uh, they're, they're working on it. So some of these can be fixed in, a, like in each pillar through the images, or some of these can be fixed more at that People Tools level. Um, so there's a couple different approaches to these fixes. Because uh, with the People Tools level, it's going to have that uh, all the cross pillar impact in lots of different places. So. Um, so on HCM, uh, so there's a there's a combo box drop down. So when you when you go to bring down that combo box, uh, it gives you a blank row at the top, and uh, it shouldn't do that. So uh, we're we're going back and forth working with Oracle in, in our service request on that one. Um, and there was also uh, so we also sent them a question about the accessibility of their compliance of the uh, of the calendar widget. And so they have a fix coming in people tools A59 for uh, Firefox because it currently uh, isn't fully compliant in Firefox. And, um, and then also currently it, it does work in Chrome um, if you're leveraging Oracle's recommended keyboard shortcuts as you're navigating through the, the calendar widget. Um, so uh, I put a link to that in the, in the slides. Um, and so you, you can just click on that link and they'll bring you to that page. Um, and so if, if this isn't working for you, it is not working for you in any way, please let us know. Um, and, and we'll work with Oracle. 
Christopher, this is Sandy. I, I have a question on the third bullet, which says HCM combo box. Do we know what page or functional area that is related to? I noticed we didn't put that in the. Oh, sure. Yeah, so um, Pamaja, you, you can update the, if this isn't totally correct, but I think this is all combo boxes. Um, and we, we, we came, this came up when you go to choose your immunization type. Um, we found that when we were testing on that on that COVID attestation page, but this is true throughout the system for combo boxes. I see Pam when she's muted, but I, I saw her head nod, so I think she agrees. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with me today? Sorry about that. All right. This is Padma again. So in people tools, there are some basic controls that we use, like checkbox, switch, combo box, calendar control. So all these are basic controls that are used throughout fluid pages. Means fluid means the latest version of the PeopleSoft. Uh, they are used everywhere. So we noticed issues with those core objects and we raised those issues like Christopher mentioned. The combo box always shows one blank row as the first row. And uh, if it's a required value, then it actually reads as invalid value in, in VDA. Also, it keeps the option highlighted when the drop down is select something, it remains highlighted. So if somebody picks the last value and comes back to that page and hits the down arrow, then it goes nowhere. So it should not keep highlighted because we visually can see the order uh, for a screen reader user, what, he, what, they, what they hear is what it is on the screen so it should not be different from the visual user so they, these are and also the switch control which uh, christopher mentioned about uh, which is the wave evaluation tool is complaining about um, oracle was pushing back on that saying that it's a problem with the evaluation tool but uh, we christopher pushed back on that and uh, Basically, they wanted which standard is violated and behind the scene, we could see that there is a switch control as well as checkbox hidden, so that it's showing two labels. So I have given that, <laughs> that look at this, so they are going to evaluate and with calendar widget, they have their own keyboard shortcuts and uh, in Firefox, simply month and year, drop downs were not even accessible. So they are fixing that. But when we brought this up in customer focus meeting, uh, they asked us to demo this to show to all customers. So that meeting is next week. And uh, I'll be pre preparing a small uh, demo to show them how these basic controls uh, have issues uh, that, that we will be showing to Oracle. And hopefully they fix it because if those don't work, then they will be impacting in all our uh, objects in all of, uh, in our application throughout. Does that uh, explain, Sandy? Yes, this is Sandy. Thank you. That's very helpful. I was hoping that was not the case. That <laughs> it was just a single page, but. Um... That's unfortunate. So I'm glad that this is kind of exciting to know that they're open to hearing and seeing what is or us demonstrating what the issues are. So that's that's hopeful. Yes, and they actually uh, did not when uh, Christopher brought uh, that point that they were pushing back again, saying that you should not be. It's an evaluation tool, and that it is uh, pointing out a uh, error. Um, they did that in the meeting and they said we will talk to our analysts uh, that they should not be answering like this to customers. So they are open to uh, they, they are open to fixing it and I think they're working on it. Thank you. Padma, this is Monica speaking um, from the state board. Um, so I just wanted to kind of summarize this conversation a little bit for folks who, because this was a lot of information and for folks maybe who aren't grabbing onto the specific technical issues that we just um, explained. I 
I want to say thank you to, to you, Padma, because what I heard is that you and your team have documented these concerns thoroughly with Oracle and writing via um, the SR request process, and that they are, have started to look into and exploring these but you know, behavioral issues um, and accessibility barriers with the widget and combo box. And they've asked you to provide a demonstration at next week's meeting, which I think that is um, revealing of the good work and the relationship that you and your, your team are uh, creating with Oracle that they're, they're asking for that kind of demonstration and feedback is, um, you know, more than we've seen in the past. So I, I just want to say that those are good takeaways for this group to kind of hear and hold on to as we move forward and, um, you know, asking them to fix these issues. So thank you. Also, regarding calendar WeChat, there was an, the, the issue was in Firefox. I did not see any other issue in using that. If it, there is there is no other problems, then that, that service request will be closed. So if you have any other concerns, please bring those up to our team because that service request will be closed after Firefox issue is fixed. This is Sandy. Thanks, Christopher and team. That was awesome. So the next part, uh, we of course have on the forum website an opportunity for colleges to submit questions to the state board. And um, I don't believe we've received any this past month. And um, hopefully Monica will say that is true because <laughs> um, I don't know, many of you know that we just deployed uh, eight colleges into CTC link over the past uh, five weeks. So four weeks, it's kind of a blur right at the moment. So we've been a little distracted um, here trying to prep and support those colleges. So I apologize if one did come in, it wasn't intentional that it was missed, but um, usually I'm pretty good at seeing those um, off the bat. Thanks, Sandy. This is Monica. We have not had any um, pre-submitted questions come through with the online submission form, so you didn't miss anything. And I see a comment in the chat from Bellevue that it's a first day for Bellevue staff live with CTC Link. So That's exciting. Would, yeah. <laughs> would, would now be a good time to see if there are questions or comments that the that folks on the call want to share? Okay, so um, if anyone has a comment or question or clarifying question from the content that we've already covered and discussed today, please feel free to put that in the chat or unmute yourself. This is Monica again. I, um, I'm not seeing any additional questions or comments in the chat. Um, are there other agenda items that we have that we plan to cover today, Chris or Sandy? This is Sandy. I didn't have anything. I skipped over the previous slide real quick. Just reminding everybody we have the accessibility website hasn't changed much just because we've been really focused on the deployment groups, but it's out there. It has the links to, of course, this forum and the recordings and the slide decks. We'll have that posted. Our next meeting is December 14th, 11 a.m. And we're really open to suggestions on what we can, uh, if you want a specific topic discussed or um, anything new, just send a link through the forum website and then uh, we can go ahead and get it prepped and ready for you for the next meeting. That's all I have. 
Thanks, Sandy. This is Monica again. Well, I know I'm looking forward to our next meeting in December to um, hear from Padma how the and and Chris how the meeting with Oracle went and um, how they received the demos that you're putting together for them. And in the meantime, between now and the meeting, uh, please let me know um, if there's anything I can do to support your efforts um, in moving that forward. But I hope that we'll have good news to share in December with everyone here on the call. Okie dokie folks, this is Monica again. So um, I just wanna thank uh, Sandy and Chris and their team again for the work you're doing um, and the information you shared with us today. I wanna thank everyone who joined us um, and took some time out of your day-to-day -to, -day to, to speak with us um, and for participating in the conversation about the W2 forum. Um, and our next meeting, as Sandy said, is December 14th at 11 a.m. Please feel free to reach out with questions or requests or comments before that time, should you have that. Um, and if there isn't anything else that anyone has uh, burning that they want to mention, I think I will go ahead and close the meeting. Um, we'll be sure to share this recording um, and, power, and the PowerPoint slide is already online. So we'll sure to share this recording as soon as possible on the, on the web page. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, see you in December, everyone.